Hey, you're listening to the right episode. If you wanted to know how to take hard conversations and turn them into wins. Uh, Today, we were on the Loan Officer Breakfast Club. A great conversation came up from Joel, and he said, man, I have just landed uh, a brand new whale, which for those of you who are, who who know the, 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 the our conversation, a whale is an agent that produces more than 36 buy side transactions a year. He said, I've got my first deal with him. It's in the pipeline and it has gone south just about four or five days ahead of closing. Supposed to close and fund on Monday, but today in underwriting, they found out that there is a problem because of insert in whatever you want. For this borrower, it was uh, they were using cash, not documenting it. And so the question was, man, what do I do? How do I face the agent? How can I save the deal? It's my first transaction with them and it's already gone south. So I thought, look, let's jump on an episode. Um, let me give you the feedback that I gave this morning in the Loan Officer Breakfast Club of what, uh, how to turn a hard conversation into a win. I'm your host, Steve Kyles, and we are powered by the Mortgage Marketing Animals, and you're listening to the right episode. It's going to be a good one. Uh, this is an episode that you can share with your loan partner. You can um, use yourself. I mean, it's just, it's how to turn them into just big wins. And so, hey, I want to take a minute too, uh, before we jump into the episode, if you're listening, make sure that you hit the subscribe button wherever you consume content. I would really appreciate it if you would give us a review. Uh, Uh, Tell us how this uh, podcast is impacting your life. As you give reviews, as you subscribe, it helps us in the ranking. It helps us get the word out. Share this uh, with two other loan officers today. Like, Look down at your phone right now while you're listening and just hit share. Uh, Pop in that person's name. Share it to them. Say, hey, you got to listen to this episode. Great episode on how to turn hard conversations into wins. So I've got a really, really simple formula. And you'd say, well, man, how did you figure this out from really a lot of bad conversations, bad form, you know, just bad uh, situations that have happened as a producing branch manager. I've closed thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of loans over the last 20 years. And you just start learning, okay, how do I take a bad, hard conversation and turn it into a win? Because the reality is it can be a win uh, if you'll just do the right thing. So here's the formula I use. It's called VEI. If you're driving, uh, wait till you get to a place where you can write it down. But but this is how uh, I work things into my process, how I work things into my team's process, and how I help our LOs in my branch um, work it into their process. So I use a formula. Um, I've come up with it just because, look, when you're having these hard conversations, sometimes, man, you're like, you got the gut feeling, you know, you promised you were going to close on time. Something came up. It was a, um, you know, maybe a hard underwriter. Maybe you missed a guideline. Maybe it wasn't pre-qualified correctly. Maybe it wasn't even your fault. You didn't do anything wrong. It just blew up. And now you're the one that's got to go call and tell the people that have trusted you that you got a real issue and a problem and their deal may not close. The buyer may lose earnest money. That's non-refundable. They've already spent money on an appraisal and inspection and the agent's going to be angry. The listing agent's going to be mad. And, you know, there's all of these things. And so just from having hard conversations, uh, the VEI stands for this validate, educate, and instruct. So VEI validate, educate, instruct, validate, educate, instruct, validate, educate, instruct. And look, here, here's what I think about. I need a formula to turn this hard conversation into a win. Sometimes I won't be able to win them back, but at least I could do the right thing. So here's what you do. When you're having the hard conversation, ask yourself, what's that agent going to say? Like if I tell them, hey, I know today's Tuesday. I know we're supposed to close next Monday. Something came up today and it looks like it could literally cause the whole file not to close or delay closing. What's that agent going to say? I already know it. I hear it. I've heard it a thousand times. Um, Hey, and look, by the way, you're going to have one in 20 deals, one in 30, one in 40 deals. They're going to go sideways because of things you don't even know. Like this last quarter, man, I had a deal go sideways. Um, You know, I got a great team. They keep me out of the files. They, They do a great job. But on the written verification of employment, just a few days before closing, it should have just been a standard verification. And it came back that they had switched him from a full 40 to variable income. Look, 
we did our diligence on the front end. Should we have asked, hey, did you, do you, are you working a full 40 or has something changed since we did your pre-approval in the last 60 days? We could have sharpened it. However, we missed it. And it came up, it blew the deal up. We were able to still find a solution, but we closed a few days late. But I ended up using the validate, educate, and instruct in such a way that while we were in the middle of the process of fixing the solution, even though we've got a back closing up, the agent gave us a couple of more referrals. Um, So it works, validate, educate, instruct. When I'm thinking about the agent, they're going to say this. Why are you finding out about it at the end of the process? We're a week away from closing and you just now found out about it, right? What are they going to say? Why has it taken this long? What are they going to say? What's the likelihood of this thing actually closing? What are they going to say? How come you didn't catch this? These are things that you would ask if you were in their position. I always think about, okay, what do I have to validate? Um, And then also, I always think about this. Whoever says it first wins. So if they ask me that question without me addressing that concern or what I know will come up, then they already win. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to validate. I'm going to say, listen, Mr. And Mrs. Uh, Realtor, I know your first thought is, why are we finding out one week ahead of closing? Well, let me tell you, here's the way the process is. We did a full, thorough pre-approval. We had the loan submitted into underwriting, and, and then I just lay it out. Um, I will literally lay out why it is we're finding out at the end of the process and what either could or couldn't have been done to avert this as a crisis. I'm going to validate. Why are we finding out at the end of the process? Hey, one of the things I love to do too, I hear it all the time. Well, you've had the file for 30 or 45 days, and then you go back and look at the calendar and you realize, man, we've only had the file 18 calendar days. Um, people lose track of time. So even before I have the hard conversation, I look at the file and I say, look, we got it in on January 1st. We ordered the appraisal by January 3rd. We ended up doing this on the 7th. We had it underwritten by the 10th. We ended up doing this by the 12th. We were here on the 17th and today is the 21st day. So we've had the file for literally 21 calendar days and only 12 business days. And here's what we did. And I can tell you this, I wish we would have seen it earlier. I wish, you know, you can go in and lay into what it is. You just got to validate it. Look, they're going to be frustrated. They're going to ask questions. They're going to want to know why. So I go in and I say it first. And then I just tell them, look, if I'm, if I'm in your position, here's the validation. I would feel frustrated. I would be angry. I would be wanting to know why this wasn't addressed earlier. What could have been done to solve this sooner? And as you say that, it's like letting air out of a tire. You can feel the anxiety, the frustration begin to dissipate because what half of the problem is this. I want to be heard and I want to be validated that I'm frustrated and it's okay. The second thing is, I want you to educate me. What are we going to do today? So when I'm looking at the education piece, I like to give percentages. Hey, Mr. Realtor, look, I've looked at the file. My team and I, even if you're a solo loan officer, you have a team of underwriters, processors, managers, people that you can, I always say my team and I, even if you're individual, we are actively looking and working on a solution. And we understand, here's where I'm going to say it. We understand the importance of closing Mr. Smith. We understand the importance of non-refundable earnest money. We understand they've already paid out a thousand dollars in inspections and all of the things they've done up front. We understand that your commission's on the line. And I want you to know, here's what I believe our next step needs to be and what we're moving towards. And then I like to give them a percentage. Hey, listen, there's only a 60% chance that I'm going to be able to help you find a solution. And here's why. Um, and what I can tell you is the full resource of my office, I am fully committed committed, fully engaged. I'm all in. This is my sole focus to help find a solution here over the next 24 hours. And 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 what we're going to do is put every resource we have. We've got some of the smartest minds in the country, a part of this group and in my team and in our organization. And we're going to see what kind of solution we can put together. So you educate them. And here's what the education is, is what happened, why it happened. I'm educating them on what the potential solution would be. I'm educating them on whatever it is I need to educate them on, I'm going to educate. So I validated 
the frustration. I said it first. Uh, I validated why we are where we're currently at so that I'm taking away the ammunition they're going to have. I'm going to educate them on where we currently stand. I like to give percentages as well so they understand the severity of, look, man, I'm 95% confident we got this. Um, and it lets them have a, a breath of fresh air. Look, here's what happened. This two, three, four things came up and here's how we're going to solve it. I'm 95% confident based on what the borrower told me, the solutions here, we're going to have to back it up. Um, you know, three to five days, I'll give you the exact dates we need to back it up, but here's the solution. That's where I'm educating them. And then I'm going to instruct them on what they need to do next and what we're going to do next. So I'm going to instruct them. Part of my instruction is I like, look, when a crisis comes up, you need more communication, not less. I need to be active. Look, how many times have you a file blown up and that agent just keeps blowing you up every hour? They're blowing you up every hour. They're blowing you up on your cell phone or your text. I like to be proactive. We're taking a hard situation and we're going to convert it into a win. The win is they need more communication, not less. So as I'm instructing them, I'm going to say, Mr. And Mrs. Realtor, here's what I'm doing. My next step is this. So we educated them. Now, my next action item is one, two, three, four. Here's what I need you to do. I need you to get the contract amended. I need you to do this. Maybe it was an appraisal issue that popped up and the appraisal came in a day before closing and there was a deficiency on the property. So I'm going to instruct if I need them to go do something, uh, I'm going to instruct them on what I've got the buyer going to do. I'm going to instruct them on what I'm doing to solve the problem. And then I'm going to say, hey, listen, I will have a solid answer for us and whatever it is you're promising by 4 p.m. today, and you will hear from me by 4 p.m. today. So let me and my team get to work. We're going to hustle. We're going to do it. We are diligently following up because we understand the importance of this situation. I'm X percent confident we're going to find a solution and, and, and I'll give you a full update by 4 PM. And then here's what you got to do. You got to deliver. You got to call them at four. And, and here's what I would encourage you to do, man, shoot them a text at 10 AM, shoot them a text at noon, shoot them a text at two, and then make sure you call them on the dot or before 4 p.m. Because look, they're looking for more communication, not less. And, and it is nothing to shoot a quick text. Hey, just talk to my manager, still working. I want you to know we're working on a solution. Hey, working through this, I'm working with underwriting. The borrower just got me back the document. Over communicate and you will win the heart of that agent. Listen, if it's uh, the, the producers know deals go bad, producers know clients buy furniture ahead of closing, producers know that their client credit score could have dropped because they maybe had a late they didn't tell you about, and you found out when you did your updated credit. Uh, there are so many things in this dance we call the mortgage industry that can affect a loan. It's not their first rodeo. What matters is that you are a great leader in this transaction, that I validate what just happened happened. I educate them on what a potential solution is, and I uh, instruct them on what the next steps are, what they're going to do, what I'm going to do, the buyer's going to do. That's great leadership. And when a realtor understands that you're taking the helm and you're leading this transaction, which would have otherwise been a complete mess, and you've turned it around, even if you ultimately can't save the deal, do the right thing and you'll win the business. Do the right thing. Have the hard conversations. You you know, and I will tell you this, I always encourage you, this is one of those where you get better, not bitter. Look, if I made a mistake, I, I missed something, even better yet, if my team made a mistake and they should have caught it. You know, I'll tell you on that variable income loan we had a few months ago, that was, uh, it went through the hands of six people on my team. Um, from the front, from the first call, all the way back to where it, the back end loan partner, there were six people that had touched that file. And the fact that that didn't get addressed or caught up front was, it, it, I could have been angry and mad and said, why didn't you? And you should have. But instead, we just said, hey, where is it broken in our process? Because if it happens here, we can't have that happen again. And so one time, listen, it's a, we're going to build a process. Second time, if we don't have a process in place, it's my fault. But as the leader, when I'm making those calls, I'm not saying that crappy underwriter, that mean loan partner, that back-end processor. It's my responsibility. At the end of the day, 
I am the loan officer on the file. So you know what? Hey, listen, Mr. Realtor, I take full responsibility. I have a phenomenal team, but it is my responsibility. You have trusted me with your client to go start to finish. You have trusted me with your commission to go from start to finish all the way through to closing. A mistake was made regardless of whose fault it is. I will do everything in my power, the full resource of my office to help you get this transaction closed. Look, relationships, Mr. Realtor, are built not when it's easy, but when it's tough. And when it's tough, I'm going to stand here and we're going to either find solutions or with all integrity, be able to walk away from the deal, having done everything we can absolutely do, but there will be nothing left on the field. I hope you hear the way I'm talking because that's how I talk to my agents. That's how you should talk to your agents. They're going to be angry. They're going to be mad. They're going to be frustrated that something popped up. But when you have that real conversation and you validate them, educate them, instruct them, uh, you count the days and you identify the things that could have done better. They recognize this is a guy who gets better. This is a team that gets better. This is a girl or a woman or, or in, in, an individual, an organization that recognizes mistakes happen, but we're going to fix mistakes uh, because we believe in results, no excuses. And so I hope this helps uh, when the hard conversations come, you got to hit them head on, uh, get ahead of it say what they're thinking. Cause you already know you've heard the conversation you've heard, man, I shouldn't have trusted you. Or if, why did it take so long? You could have moved faster. I always just think about those things that take a few minutes. I look at the facts. Remember this. It's not, it's not emotion. It's data. There are emotions involved. I usually count the days, look at the file, evaluate what we could have done differently. What's the solution. And then I go to my partners. I go to the agents. I go to the clients and I validate it educate and instruct. You do that. You're going to have a winning conversation, even on the hard calls. Hey, listen, if you want more help, even building your, your plan, uh, you want more help on how to implement this, uh, book a strategy call, man. We've got a great team. Myself and I would love to jump on myself and our team would love to jump on a strategy call with you, man, invest 45 minutes to show you how to build a great plan, how to have a great book of business, even some of the scripts that go with validate, educate, and instruct. Go to freedomplanningcall.com, freedomplanningcall.com. We would absolutely love to help you um, build this not only as a structure, but make sure you've got the right plan to win in 2023. Man, it's going to be a great year and just excited to have you on the journey. Hey, subscribe, share, uh, give us a review. It helps us in the podcast. And with that, guys and girls, remember this, anything worth doing is worth doing badly. Just get started. See you.